With the introduction in Nilu, a lot of players are having a lot of fun with her unique bloom reaction that does good damage and covers some cool AoE, making the bloom reaction a very viable way to play. However, the downside to it is that you need all Dendro characters and all Hydro characters on your team to get that unique bloom reaction, and we only have three Dendro characters total, making her teams very limited and making a lot of people wonder just how good she is outside of a Bloom team. And today we'll answer that question. Hi there, Blossom's here. And today we're going to be going over Nilo's non Bloom teams. We'll be going over Electro Charge, Freeze and Vaporize and just giving you my overall thoughts on how good she is in each of those scenarios. We'll also be talking about how you're going to want to build her quite a bit differently from those uh, uh, from her normal build, at least in general. But, you know, for her normal build, we will also be having that video come out very soon. So if you want to see that, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you can catch that video when it comes to you. But let's go ahead and talk about non-Bloom Nilo. As for how you're going to want to build your non-Bloom Nilo, the set bonuses do change a little bit. You're still going to want to use something like the Tenacity of the Millith for the increase of HP there, but you're also going to want to use something like the Heart of Depth for the increase in your Hydro Damage bonus. This is going to net you a good bit more of that damage. However, I will say the four-piece Tenacity of the Millith does find some new usage here on Nilo, because even though this four-piece set isn't very good for your current Bloom teams, so that's why we're typically not using it. If you are planning on using a shielder and characters that benefit from attack percentage, the four piece here could be very good on her because remember when you use her E skill and you convert your normal attacks to hydro damage bonus, that damage is still considered elemental skill damage and will activate this passive here on Tenacity of the Millet. So do keep that in mind. That is very important. There are some other unique mechanics about her elemental skill and the normal attacks that we'll go over later, but I think those kind of set bonuses are going to want to be what you look for and your main stats will also change hp percentage on the sand is going to be the answer here because remember that your damage is still all scaling off of your hp there your max hp but you are going to want to change over to something like a hydro damage bonus goblet here and then a crit rate or crit damage circlet whatever is going to net you the best results there for that crit rate and crit damage to get those big boy numbers as for a weapon i am going to be using her signature weapon here the key of kajani suit at level 80 i just don't have the mass to get it to 90 right now as this still gives you a ton of hp and it also gives you a ton of elemental mastery which is going to be very good even if she's not in a bloom team because electro charge is very good scales with elemental mastery your vaporizes will deal more damage with elemental mastery the only exception here is that your freeze really isn't going to benefit from it but that sheer amount of hp is going to be phenomenal for her and help out that damage overall and then the stats that we end up with, we sit at a cool 46k here with 113 elemental mastery and then 66% crit rate, 126% crit damage. Not too shabby. We've got a decent enough ratio there. 146 on the energy recharge and 61.6 on the hydro damage bonus. So overall, this is decent enough. Uh, of course, we could get more crit rate and crit damage there if we got some better stats. But overall, this is what we're working with and we'll see how good it is from this kind of build. We're at level 79 by the way not 80 i'm sorry if that's bothering you i just ran out of books at one point or another and i guess i could level her up here to, you know i'll do it for you guys and then next up we're going to want to talk about how you're going to want to play nilo outside of a bloom reaction because a lot of the time when you're doing bloom you're more than likely using the aura version of her e skill that creates just a aoe of hydro and applies wet to everybody around her but when you're doing a non-bloom Nilo, it's more than likely going to be beneficial to do the swords dance stance for Nilo, where you convert her normal attacks to hydro damage, because then those uh, normal attacks are going to be scaling off your HP. You'll be dealing the big hydro damage, getting your reactions off, etc., etc. But there are some instances I'm sure where the aura is going to be a pretty good idea, and it might just depend on your current position in the rotation. Um, but I do want to say for the most part, you are going to want to be converting your normal attacks into that hydro damage for your non bloom Nilo. All right, first up, we'll talk about her viability in an electro charge team and how good she is here. And spoiler alert, she's pretty good in here because the sheer reality of this team, what I think is going to be her better electro charge team here, 
is uh, that if you just deleted Nilo from this team composition, it would still be a very good team composition. These three core characters are just insane in their own right and can carry them by themselves. So although Nilo is definitely helping here, she's not really needed. But some of you might be asking, well, why aren't we using somebody like Beto, which is what you might normally use in a very good taser composition or electro charge team? Uh, because Beto is insane. She does really good crowd control with her elemental burst. But remember, Nilo actually doesn't activate Beto's elemental burst in the same way that Raiden Shogun doesn't because the damage that she's doing while her normal attacks are converted to Hydro count as elemental skill damage. And even same with Fischl here and uh, Xing Shou. Fischl C6 that attacks with you whenever you do a normal attack isn't going to activate on your E skill uh, attack. So if you hit your E skill to go into your stance, it's not going to activate with Nilo. But when you convert your normal attacks to hydro damage via using that E skill and then normal attack with your new hydro damage version of your normal attacks, she will attack with you at that point. So that is a little confusing there, but that is the way it works. And then uh, Xing Shou here will likewise not activate on your actual E skill activations, but will activate when you convert your normal attacks to that hydro damage there. And I do think this is going to be your better version of an electro charge team. Uh, Fischl and Xing Shou are insane. Kazuo is insane. And you don't necessarily need these characters to have a very good electro charge team. You can, of course, put some other characters in here. Raiden Shogun is fine, but I did want to try and maximize the uh, potential for an electro charge team with Nilo and having Xing Shou in there is really nice because you get the additional max HP and you get the Hydro Shred depending on your Xing Shou constellations. Kazuo buffs up your damage uh, via his uh, uh, swirling with the Viridescent Venner and giving some extra elemental damage bonus. And then Fischl's just there for, you know, Electro Application. And she's insane at Electro Application. She's going to be very good at applying it to everybody on her own. So you really don't need another Electro character. And you have plenty of crowd control with somebody like Kazuha or Sucrose that can fill in these slots. Overall, really liked this team. They were pretty strong and I didn't have any issues. And especially with uh, Nilo's signature weapon converting some of your HP into that elemental mastery makes her electro charge potential go through the roof because uh, electro charge scales well with elemental mastery and getting that extra EM to buffer up to some pretty considerable elemental mastery made her electro charge capability that much more potent. Now, is she necessarily better than any other hydro character DPS that you might want to use? for your electro charge teams. Uh, well, I mean, not really. She's fine. Uh, she does have that kind of potential that I mentioned before, where you could just use your aura instead of her normal attacks every now and then to have that while maybe you're swapping to your supports. And that's very nice. But overall, she's not providing anything that the uh, others don't. So she's definitely usable here, not necessarily better than anybody else, but still a solid option. Next up, we'll talk about Vaporize, and Vaporize is pretty good on Nilo. This actually surprised me. We're getting some pretty big damage numbers, and it was fairly consistent. This is the team I landed on with Nilo, Kazuha, or Sucrose, you know, insert Animo Shred character here. And then I used Bennett and Shangling, and I thought this might not be too good because Bennett's attack bonus obviously isn't contributing to Nilo's damage since it scales off of max HP, but this ended up being sort of a boon because you could use Nilo's E skill, get the water aura going on, and then swirl characters with Kazuha, bunch them all up, get all of that hydro applied, shred for the hydro, and then slam with Bennett's burst, deal a big number with Bennett's burst, and then continue to apply pyro with Shang Ling's burst, Go back to Nilo, use her E skill, convert your attacks to the hydro damage and get your vaporizes consistently like that. Now, the vaporizing itself does seem to be a little up in the air as to whether it's going to be Nilo or Shang Ling actually doing the vaporize. But for the most part, it seemed that Nilo was going to be the one vaporizing for me. This also depends how you use your Kazuha burst. If you absorb the pyro or the hydro, etc., you know, that can vary there but this team was actually pretty strong and dealing some pretty considerable damage. And I do think you would change up this team if we had more pyro characters that could actually help with off field pyro application. You could use somebody like Toma, but his pyro application 
isn't very good, and I think you just benefit substantially more from somebody like Shang Ling on the team. Uh, I guess you could put in Amber there, but then you're kind of lacking a healer, so Bennett just kind of ends up being the better option as per usual. But this Vaporized team was actually pretty strong and dealing some good numbers. I think the biggest number I hit with my Nilo was about 88k or something on her burst. And then uh, the nice part about her burst is that second hit, you can actually manage to get some pyro in there for it to also vaporize. You do have to be a little quick there and just time everything kind of perfectly to get that second vaporize, but you can make it happen and it's pretty good. I really do uh, like this team overall. It kind of surprised me. I didn't think it was going to be as strong as it was, but the vaporizes felt strong and consistent. And honestly, I couldn't really tell the difference between this and a normal vaporize team. So altogether, yeah, kudos. I, I can't believe Nilo actually worked pretty well in this vaporized team. All right, next up is likely the most interesting part of the video is the freeze compositions for Nilo. And that is not because her freeze compositions are good or interesting or broken or anything. These freeze teams are fine. I was messing around with a bunch of different freeze teams and they all seem fine. I kind of landed on having Mona as one of your uh, characters for your freeze team just for the damage bonus that Mona provides as that's very good. Of course, you can swap her out for like Kokomi and then just replace Diona with like Ganyu or something. That's fine too. This is definitely the most flexible team composition as Freeze generally is. It's just going to be kind of however you want to uh, dish out your Freeze and make that happen. Uh, you can change a lot of characters here. You could have Yulon here, you could have Diona here, and then you're getting the Hydro Resonance for the HP bonus, the Diona. There's all sorts of things you could do. You could have Kazuha here, but I do think you kind of want to land on double Hydro and double Cryo. Uh, but obviously you can still have an Animo character here for the Shred, whatever you think is going to best fit you. Your Freeze is generally going to be fine, but I do think this kind of lacked uh, because I've just enjoy other freeze teams more. This just didn't feel that great compared to other freeze teams I played with, especially recently with Candice. I really like quick swap freeze teams with Candice. That is a lot of fun. And you might be thinking, well, why don't you just use Candice with, with Nilo? Well, you can, and you do get the HP bonus for Candice, but remember that Candice's bonus for um, her actual damage increase for your normal attacks won't apply to Nilo because that damage bonus applies to your normal attack damage. So uh, since Nilo's attack damage while she's doing her hydro normal attacks is considered elemental skill damage, this will not apply to Nilo. However, during the downtime that you do have with Nilo, you could use this burst to supply Nilo with some hydro infused normal attacks. So there is that option, but for the most part, you're generally not going to be benefiting from the elemental uh, burst that uh, Candace provides, the extra damage that she actually provides. So I don't think they're necessarily the best option. I think you have some better freeze options with Candace in general, like just doing Candace and Kazuha and then maybe uh, two other cryo characters and infusing Kazuha with Hydro to get that Hydro application. So why did I say this was probably one of the more interesting parts of the video? Because as I was doing these freeze teams, I started to think of more interesting teams like a bloom team and or a uh, fridge team. A lot of people are calling it where you bloom with freeze combined. You freeze opponents and then you bloom. And yes, this is just a worst version of a bloom team with Nilo. And after realizing that and how kind of dumb that was. I, however, still enjoyed this team overall uh, just because you kind of stop opponents in their tracks and then you can bloom them. But then I decided to take it a step further and I started messing around with some other teams after I realized the potential behind this and I kind of landed on a team like this. Basically, a kind of freezer burn team is what I'd like to call it in the sense that you're going to be freezing opponents, causing blooms, and you're also going to be causing burgeons, melts, uh, occasionally vaporizes with a character like Shang Ling. This team is actually way more fun than I ever thought it was going to be. This is actually a very cool team because you can create consistent blooms with Nilo and the uh, Dendro main character here. Diona provides some cryo. You can uh, keep opponents frozen. You get an elemental mastery boost, which is important because when those blooms happen, they'll deal more damage. Or when you cause burgeon with Shang Ling, which is going to happen often, 
you're going to cause more damage with those burgeons. But whenever you cause burning with Shangling and the Dendro main character, that Pyro Aura is going to stay on them. And if you're on Nilo and you convert her normal attacks to the Hydro damage, then you're going to be able to consistently vaporize as well. This is a really cool team because you can not only uh, bloom and freeze, but you can also vaporize with Nilo and vaporize with Shangling or melt with Shangling and cause burgeon with Shangling. And I think this gets exponentially more interesting when you add something like the Dragon's Bane on Shangling and uh, actually get that elemental mastery increase for your burgeons. I think that's a pretty cool idea. And overall, I was most impressed with this team. This was definitely one of the more fun and interesting type of teams. And I'm really interested to see how it can actually evolve with some other characters that might be able to help a team composition like this. And you can certainly do this with other Hydro characters, uh, like Ayato would be fine here too, and some other Hydro characters could certainly fit the bill for a team like this. But I'd, I do want to say that I think Nilo kind of fit this niche of a team a little bit better just due to her downtimes on her E skill and the way she just kind of flows in gameplay in general. It kind of just created these perfect opportunities and windows for all of these uh, interesting interactions to actually pop off. But you definitely can use other characters here. I, however, actually do like Nilo the most in this kind of team. But all right, that's going to be it for today's video. Hopefully I provided you with some context on what a non-Bloom Nilo looks like as she's actually much better than I thought she was going to be and performs way better than I ever thought she was going to in these non-Bloom teams. She's amazing in Bloom, but she's not bad outside of it either. And I'm really enjoying her overall. I think she's a really fun character and I'm even more excited to get more Dendro characters that can fit in her different Bloom teams as I think that's when we're really going to see Nilo be much more interesting. But hey, let me know what you guys thought about the video in the comment section below. I would love to see that. But other than that, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and the build video for Nilo will be on the way soon. I'll catch you guys in the next video. My name is Blossoms. See ya.